Okay, we're going to look at Macaw. Macaw is a program very similar to Adobe Reflow. It works on the same principles. You create a mock-up, um, design mock-up, more or less working towards designing the browser, although you don't have to do any code in it. And then it will create responsive design or media query breakpoints once you've created the original design. Now, we'll just have a quick overview of the um, layout. So if we come up here, we have uh, the tools. The tools has a select tool, which you select objects and move them around. Direct select tool is for collect, selecting components, maybe within a group um, individually. You have a text tool, which creates text blocks. You have an element tool, so that creates blocks where you're going to put other information inside. It creates div tags for you. And then you have the container tool, which again, similar to the element tool, but um, that's for grouping elements. So usually when you put that on the page, you'll find it has a transparent background, whereas the element tool would have a gray background to it. Um, then we have the button tool. So you can create buttons to create links. You can have on touch events, uh, hovers and uh, rollovers on that. Then we have the inputs or the form tools. That's for putting in forms or larger um, text fields. You can have drop down menus, you can have check boxes and radio buttons. Then we have coding, that's for embedding HTML code within the Macaw document or page. Then we have the move or hand tool for moving the page around um, like that if you want to navigate around. Then we've got the eyedropper tool for selecting colors. Up at the top here, the hamburger menu, if you click on that, it has our page structure. Um, you can add new pages or you can duplicate pages. That's very useful if you created a sort of a master template. You can then change that around and add new pages and then add the content in between, like creating a header and footer and then adding, duplicating the page and adding other um, components on that. You have different views, which we'll look at later on. You have the normal view, you can have an outline, which just shows you all the boxes, like a wireframe. And then it has a wireframe, which basically just changes everything into gray, but probably the most useful one for seeing how your page structure is and how accurate you've got everything lined up will be the outline view. Now, if we move across here, you have the canvas or the page, uh, very similar to Adobe Reflow. Although McCall gives you better margins on the side, it has these margins on the has the pixels up at the top, which are basically uh, almost notional. They're there to, to give you an idea of how you're laying things up with responsive design. You know, you're not designing to any pixel dimensions there, you just large, medium, or small for phones. It has a DOM, so before you put breakpoints in, this is the DOM, and the DOM is the document object model which has all the structure of the uh, web page and then you would then manipulate the DOM uh, when you put in your breakpoints. You find some big changes you can't make in the breakpoints or the media queries, you have to make that in the DOM so it runs through your, your, your whole document. Over here on the right we have the inspector and that has any setup that you have on your page so if i made an element over here that will change to those if i made a text box it will change to the uh, text box over here so it just gives you all those options to customize uh, any of those elements on the page also as you see here we've got the canvas up there you can change the page percentage by making it bigger or smaller as a default it's on 80. you can include increase the amount of columns you have on here and also gaps you can turn off the structure if you want to see what the page looks like without it add up background images you can change the color of your page if you wished uh, to give it another color um, so you can change that around or add a, up here a background image if you should want a background image on your page give your page titles over here as well then we have the outline view. There's nothing in our outline yet because we've got no components on the page. But if we did drag a component, they would start to appear on here. Now, a little bit different than Reflow. So as we um, add page elements on here, you find the first one you put down is at the bottom. 
and the last one is at the top which sometimes can be you know not what you want if you want you know to have your page structure from top to bottom you get around that by nesting objects together or you can move objects around but you need to be aware if you are moving objects around they all have margins on them core will be pushing these out of the way or getting its coordinates from somewhere else like negative margins here positive there so you see these different things which you're going to have and you get around what with how you nest and what containers you have in there right so i'll just delete those elements then finally we have the library over here the library you bring in all your components like images and whatever other components you want to lay up on your page okay if i go up to the um, menu at the top there's not a lot on the menu certainly common common ones um, you can have you can import things to the library import things straight to the canvas you publish um, and also publish settings again um, it's got the edit which has got mostly copying and pasting and moving things around then we've got select uh, how to select objects um, or components on the page you've got your view menu which you know shows things and puts color pickers brings up your swatch um, has other information where you can bring in scripting that you can add uh, one of the good ones is centering your canvas you click on here and center the canvas or you can use the keyboard shortcuts to do that all right so i'll just put my view back on there then we have the elements they're quite useful for grouping elements together expanding elements or ungrouping them again you can use keyboard shortcuts to do this okay now that's just a quick overview of the interface and finally we will look at the file menu and we go to publish settings okay so here we have the published settings first up here we have in the project section we have pages now list all your pages and also it will have consolidate um, page styles now what happens with McCore if you as you create create each page it will create a um, style sheet for each of those pages now if you have you know st shared styles across your pages you can actually check the con consolidate page styles and click which pages you want to have those shared styles so it, it gets away from doing too much redundant scripting okay um, the next one down is head and tail now head and tail is where you can put scripts and meta tags in the head and also you can put it within the body in the general we have styles so we also have you know at the top we have the um, consolidate styles as we looked at before you can put shorthand properties in here which allows you when you're um, inputting information to shorthand uh, the code down so it combines that then we have the tag selector which allows um, to use tags as selectors instead of just class names again sometimes here it says that you know you might have some issues with that so that's why that's not checked then you have advanced tag selectors and this enables you know the first and the last child selectors and this will help you know consolidate um, your styles but again might cause unwanted side effects so that's why it's unchecked you can have trim white space which uh, removes any sort of space around there and helps you with the page sizes and load times again that can be put on but it as a default they leave it off add browser prefixes which is to do with um, compatibility with browsers okay moving down to units um, this is what um, fonts will be converted to when you publish again you can change those it has it on m we will leave it on m then also you've got the geometry which is just how it's scaling images again when it's published grids um, pop you can publish the grid which will create a style sheet for this grid in the background probably you know you might need that if you do need that grid but you know I've turned it off as default it appears to be on then we have um, generate optimized images 
this links to a jQuery file and it will generate a, a script file which will allow you to do with scaling and cropping images, certainly to do with high res or retina um, screens. And it will allow you to actually you know, crop an image or make it bigger or smaller, certainly to do with high density screens and that will have that functionality. Once that's checked, it will bring up other functions for the image um, scaling when you um, have it in the inspector. Okay, now remote preview that enables you to um, sort of host the site on your local server and you can pick it up maybe um, <clears throat> on other computers. Okay, so once that's done, I'll just close that down. So that's just an overview of the publish and publishing settings.